Can we just take a minute and get juicy together? Yeah, that's weird, right? If someone said that, you might be freaked out. Um, but I'm talking about Zig, and we're talking about Juicy Main, which uh, actually was merged in not too long ago. Yeah, I feel like we should talk about it. So uh, really quick, quick shout out to Computer Bread. I'm going to link his video here. Uh, if he had not published this video and it popped up in my feed, I probably wouldn't realize that this have got merged in yet, and we wouldn't be talking about it until I inevitably do an 016 release video for Zig. But we're going to do some Zig today, and we're going to talk about Juicy Main because it's here, and it's pretty cool. I like it. So let's pull it up. Okay, I've got a couple things going on here. We're in my projects directory. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using a dev build of Zig right now. Um, this is going to not be an 0.15.2, so if you are holding out like me on those uh, actual releases, like those, those qualified releases, um, you're not going to be able to do that yet. You'll have to wait until 0.16 or do a build uh, from dev like myself. Um, by the way, really quick, if you're using Mies to do that, uh, you can just Mies install Zig at master and then also Mies use global Zig at master and then you're, you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new folder here. We're gonna call it Juicy and we're gonna CD into Juicy. Yeah, it's empty. So let's Zig in it. And we now have a build.zig and a build.zig.zon for Zig, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, minimum Zig version 0.16.0. So we got a couple things going on. So let's take a look. So if I open up main.zig, you can see that we have this new init method here in our main function. So our main function has changed. I probably shouldn't have called this juicy because it is actually a little confusing seeing the word juicy up here. This is the uh, library. So if we look at our files in the file system in source, you can see that there's root.zig and main.zig. Um, root.zig is being exported as juicy. We don't need it for this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Okay, so we have a couple things going on. Let me just go ahead and remove this as well. And we don't really need our tests. We don't really need our fuzzing. So uh, yeah, so what are we looking at? 17, maybe 18? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this new juicy main. I've minimized this, so it's just the stuff that we need to focus on. We have our standard library like you would expect. We have the big I, O, like big I, capital I, lowercase O, for the new I.O. package that has been introduced uh, as of 015 and will become way more relevant once we get into 016 and in this, this dev build that I've got here as well. And then the thing we're talking about today, more specifically, is this init right here. So this is the juice, the juice of the juicy main. So... This, uh, you can call this whatever you want. Init's probably going to be the pattern that people tend to use because lowercase version of init over here. It's pretty clear. You might change it. I don't know. It's up to you. We'll figure it out. Um, some standard printing, some stuff going on. Where we start to use this init gets interesting. So what we have here, we have init.arena allocator. We also have init.minimal.args. We also have init.io. And then we also, actually, that might be it. Yeah, that is it. Okay. So what what is going on here, right? Why is this, this a thing? Why does our main method suddenly take arguments? That seems kind of weird and maybe not normal, especially given that Zig is trying to be really low level and very explicit. So Andrew Kelly put out a proposal not too long ago. I believe it was him. I, he posted the GitHub issue when they were still on GitHub. Uh, posing the question. I was not privy to the conversation, so I have no idea who actually suggested it, but my hunch is it was Andrew Kelly. And he suggested, what if we had a juicy main? So we can find it here. We can also hop over to Codeberg. Uh, I'm just going to keep it on GitHub for now. Um, sorry, Codebergians, but uh, this loaded a lot faster than Codeberg often does for me. So the idea here is, what if we could receive a bunch of goodies in main simply by asking for them? And then here's an example of that initial proposal. So you can see that there's standard process init, args, that type of stuff. Some ideas behind what this might look like. And some conversation around the, uh, the proposal itself. Uh, in fact, I'm in here somewhere. <laughs> I remember commenting on this. Yeah, right here. All things to say, let's actually hop over to Codeberg since they have a link here for the pull request. That loaded faster than I expected. There's 342 files changed. We're not gonna look at the pull request, but I do want to look at the highlights that AK gave us right here uh, explaining what's going on. 
Um, so the arrival of 2026 in his favorite way, breaking Hello World again. Love to see it. Mainly the goal was to delete the Environ global variable as well as the argv global variable because they are foot guns. There's uh, some issues with this on, well, ultimately the different platforms that Zig supports. So I think there's Windows issues that you'll run into. Uh, there's probably WASI issues. Um, just it, like, inconsistent behavior across them and, you know, that's, that's a foot gun. So the new argument may be one of three things. So the way that this works is you have this pub fun main, just like before, and you can either give it nothing here. You can give it a knit. Uh, and just to clarify, I mean, big init, so standard process init, or you can give it standard process init dot minimal. Those are your options. We'll take a look at these in just a second, but I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. Init embeds minimal inside of it. So minimal is an option, but then init also has minimal. So you can access them like so. So there's some information on the upgrade guide here. Uh, one of the things that I think is interesting is that this is going to break how I handle environment variables in all of my programs that use them, which is totally fine. It's Zig's 016-ish at this point. It's, you know, there's no 1.0 promise. There's no compatibility guarantees. I know what I signed up for, but just something to be aware of. This will probably break any of your um, ARG handling or your IO, or not, sorry, not IO, but your environment processing uh, as well. So there's some examples of how you might do some of this stuff. Uh, so running a child process and capturing its output would be something like this, standard.process.run. Um, spawning a child process like this using, you know, IO. Process replacing, accessing environment variables. This is the stuff that I'm a little more interested in showcasing here. This is arguably stuff for a much larger conversation. But the, the main idea here is that, you know, now that we have this init, we have access to the fields on init, such as this environment map, which has keys and values. And these are allocated using the general purpose allocator, which is also built onto this init object. So by requesting an init object, we get a lot of things. In fact, it probably would be good for me to just show you what those are. So if we find standard and then we find process, and we find a knit. These are the um, master branch docs, just a heads up. So these aren't 0.15.2 or anything like that. This is this is bleeding edge. If we were to look at this, we have standard process init. So, okay, yeah, so we are in this one. So these are the fields that are available. Here's some information on how to use them. Uh, this is the type of the first parameter of the main function. Applications wanting more flexibility can accept minimal instead. And then what you have here is essentially init embeds minimal. Uh, embeds might not be the appropriate term, but there's a field representing the minimal version of this as well. So it's a superset, the latter's included here. You get an arena allocator for permanent storage for the entire process, cleaned automatically on exit, and it's not thread safe. You get the GPA, uh, which is a default selected general purpose allocator for temporary heap allocations. Debug mode will set up leak checking if possible. So with this, you're not going to need to necessarily uh, create your own GPA. You can just use the one that comes off of the init struct. You get a default appropriate, sorry, an appropriate default IO implementation based on the target configuration. Debug mode will set up leak checking if possible. You get an environment map, which has uh, environment variables that are initialized with the GPA, this GPA right here. And it's not thread safe, just be aware of that. And then pre-opens. This is the one I'm a little more confused on, but these are named files that have been provided by the parent process. So they mentioned specifically that this is mostly useful on WASI, but can be used on other systems to mimic the behavior with respect to standard IO. I actually, I, I'll be very transparent. I don't know exactly how you would use this or when you would use this. This is something for me to research and uh, I'll let you know when I have something on it. Okay, so we've kind of covered this. Most of these are things you've seen before. You know what an arena allocator is at this point. You know what an allocator is. Uh, the environment map should be pretty clear. It's a map of environment variables. We're a little nebulous on pre-opens. That's okay. I, and then IO is something that if you've been following along with 015 plus and specifically 016 and getting like an actual IO implementation, um, you're probably familiar with this too. So the thing that maybe is not familiar is this minimal. So what does minimal give us? Minimal just gives us access to an environ and the args. So if you wanted to access the args from a knit, you could do a knit.minimal.args, and then you have a couple options. You have an iterate function here to iterate over those args, and then you have iterate allocator. One thing that's interesting, if you look at this iterate, it says that if you want to do cross-platform code uh, safely, 
you should use iterate allocator as well. So in some case, you'll need to actually make allocations for those um, as opposed to just iterating over them. Again, I think that's a Windows-ism, but I'm not positive. Uh, so you can also two slice these and have a slice to operate on them. Uh, they do want you to use an arena style allocator because it may reference several allocations. So just something to be aware of. They call that out here by choosing the word arena, implying that, hey, you should use an arena, but uh, yeah, it, it, it must be an arena. So those are your args. So here's your environment and you can see some information about it. So unmodified, unprocessed data provided by the operating system. You got some types here like blocks, create block POSIX options, you got a map. And more importantly, you have these functions. So this environ object has functions to indicate whether something exists in the environment variable uh, map. So in our case, these contains would be things that you would wanna use. If you want to create a null delimited environment variable block for POSIX, uh, you could use create block POSIX, create a map, allocates a map and copies the environment block into it. Get a lock is essentially going to get, oops, sorry about that. Uh, it is going to get an environment variable um, So for, by a key. So in our case, we have that environ right here, uh, which we're, you know, we're operating on. And we have our GPA that we pass into it. And then the key for the thing that we wanna get, and it returns either a get a lock error or a string. And then there's of course some Windows helpers because Windows wants to do things differently. So get Windows would be something you could use here as well. Uh, get POSIX if you are um, needing POSIX specific behavior here without necessarily doing an allocation. Uh, so yeah, you've got some options. But again, this is what we're looking at, right? This is so nice. So if we were to do this without, actually, you know what might be a good example? Let me just pull up Dust. There's a lot going on on Dust, so uh, it might not be the best example. But what I've got here is a couple different things. So in our main function, the very first thing I do, I do this all the time with Zig, is create a debug allocator. And then I have these three lines that are rinse and repeat used all over the place. And now I don't need to do that, and I can just get those from Juicy Main, which is really nice. You'll see the next thing I do. I'm parsing command line arguments. Well, son of a gun, that's gonna be provided by Juicy Main now too. So these lines right here, all of these will no longer be necessary. And that doesn't sound like much, but it's nice. It's one less step that people have to worry about when they start with Zig for the first time. And to be completely honest, there's more that Juicy Main's gonna do for me, but I've structured some of this code in a way that maybe isn't the best uh, in an effort to get something out. And in doing so, I have environment handling that is not a part of my main function. So if we take a look at this config load right here, you can see that I'm doing standard process get invar owned, and I'm doing some environment type stuff here. One of my understandings here though, and I could be wrong on this, is that standard process get invar owned and similar functionality is no longer existing. So if we look at standard process, uh, so standard process get invar owned, let's see if that exists. No, okay, it doesn't. So these have also been removed in 0.16, uh, at least in the dev version, things may change by then, by the time the 0.16 hits a, a stable, stable release. But um, yeah, my hunch is it won't. So this is the new way. So like this, this is not gonna be valid anymore. And the good news is this is actually gonna get a lot cleaner because I'm just gonna be able to pull all of these out from the init that is provided by Juicy Main. And what I'm gonna be able to do instead is just pass them in. And I don't have to do this. This, this is a weird pattern too for what it's worth. Uh, this could be better if I were to just move all of this logic back to our main function and then pass things in and manage the config like that. Um, but the point being that outside of this being a little more implicit and taking away a lot of boilerplate that we do time and time again, or allowing us to remove a lot of boilerplate, I should say, it's pushing us towards patterns that are better patterns to embrace. So doing all of this up front in juicy main, whether it's juicy or not, doing it all up front in main makes a lot of sense. And if we're just gonna do it all up front, why not let Zig take care of that for us? So with Juicy Main, we can just ask for these items, like an allocator, an arena, args, environment, that type of stuff, and it's going to provide them. Oh, and an IO implementation. Don't, don't discount that IO implementation as well. 
and they'll just be provided by the zig compiler, which is so nice. Okay, that's it. I just saw Computer Bread's video. I'm going to shout him out again. I'll post a, uh, I'll put a, a link to his video, a clickable thing in my video to his video. I think that's how that works. Uh, like right here where my hand is. And um, yeah, check it out. He has a really good explainer on this too. And again, I wouldn't have even realized this dropped if his video hadn't popped up in my feed. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want notifications of new videos, make sure you click the bell. Thank you so much and have a great day.